Is a PhD the right choice for you? After we discussed four things a PhD is not, here are seven things a PhD actually is. While some of these you might have guessed, perhaps a few others may be rather different from what you thought. The very first thing a PhD is, it's a substantial investment in yourself. Congratulations, investments in yourself have the potential for the highest possible returns compared to any other. However, even though a PhD can be a wonderful experience, as with any other investment, you must first do some due diligence, otherwise you might incur great losses. Your due diligence includes finding out what you want from your life and whether a PhD will help with that. I can't answer that in this video since I don't know you. You have to look inside yourself. If your own goals are not too clear yet, a PhD is almost certainly a bad idea, at least yet. As we discussed, a PhD is not a parking spot. There are many other, more productive things you could do with your time, money and talents. So your due diligence starts with looking inwards and understanding what you want out of your life. As I told you in that other video, a PhD is not a goal in itself. It's the starting point of a long path, and it's only going to be useful to you if you want to spend your career traveling along that particular path called research. Your due diligence continues with understanding what a PhD actually is and how it can benefit you. There's plenty of advice about PhD on social media, 99% of which from people who talk about their own PhD, which is a sample size of one. Your due diligence includes choosing whom to trust and listen to. If you're new here, welcome to Frank's Day Unexplains. This YouTube channel is a spare time project of mine, funded and owned by my company Cambridge Cyber, but in my day job, I give people PhDs in computer science as a full professor at the University of Cambridge. This advice is my own and is not an official statement from either my university or Trinity College. If you trust what I have to share with you on this subject, thank you. I consider you wiser than your colleagues because you are in choosing to invest 20 or 30 minutes of your time into this video as due diligence to assess the suitability of an investment that would eat up a minimum of three years of your life and often several more. I'm not planning on putting up lots of visuals here. I'm just offering you the hardcore content. So feel free also just to listen on headphones while you're commuting or doing household chores. Second, a PhD is a deep dive. You become extremely specialized in one very narrow topic. You read everything that has ever been done about that topic. Then, crucially, you do a bit more yourself, you advance the field a little bit, and you add something new that the scientific community didn't know before. Along the way, you become the world expert on this very narrow topic. You do that by specializing to the extreme. You start with the topic you like, for example, finance. Okay, very broad. Billions of people are interested in that. You intersect it with some other interest of yours, finance in the digital society. A bit more specific but still very broad. Drill down further. Fully digital payments across the network. And now we're getting some, somewhat more specific. Fully digital payments across the network without intermediation from central authority. Now you land it into cryptocurrency territory. You've narrowed it down quite a bit. It's still a field with millions of players. You must drill down a lot more. So this is where you must start reading the latest research papers to figure out what are the hard problems that still haven't been solved. Energy efficient and low latency double spending prevention with reversibility and anonymity of transactions in fully digital payments across the net without intermediation from central authority. You see, any topic can be refined and refined and refined to the point where there are only a thousand people in the world working on it, and then only a hundred, and then only ten, and then you keep specializing until you're facing an extremely specific, obscure problem that only you are trying to solve, at least right now. You become the world expert because nobody else has looked at this particular problem with as much care and intensity as you. I have been blessed with many outstanding mentors in my own research career, and one of them, Turing Award winner Sir Morris Wilkes, my academic great-great-grandfather, once told me, the PhD is the examination where you choose your own questions. And what he meant is that you are the one who decides what to specialize in. You become the expert on that. And then, once you finally write up and submit your dissertation, your PhD examination will consist of very specific questions that the examiners will ask you on the thesis that you chose to defend and about which you should by then be the world expert. Third, the PhD is an apprenticeship. The whole point of doing a PhD is to turn you into a member of the worldwide scientific community on your topic. So for at least three years, you are going to be the apprentice of an established member of this peer group, learning how to do stuff, specifically learning how to make new science, how to contribute to our worldwide body of knowledge with the original research, and at the end, you're going to be admitted as a peer into this group. During this apprenticeship, you will learn how to do scholarly work properly, how to evaluate the work of others to distinguish the good stuff from the so-so stuff, from the BS, and how to express your discoveries in a way that other people can understand and use them, and a gazillion other things. You will learn to present your ideas, 
to debate, to argue for your views even when they are unpopular and nobody believes in them. You will go to workshops and conferences. You will read and criticize plenty of articles written by others. You will publish your own articles. And all along, your PhD supervisor will guide you on how properly to do each of those things. How do you read a scientific paper? How do you extract the actual content? How do you evaluate whether it's good or so-so or groundbreaking before it has been validated by being published in a famous venue? You must learn how to make that judgment for yourself because when the paper is first written, the prestigious journal has to decide whether to accept it for publication or not. And to do so, it sends it to knowledgeable peers in the scientific community. And these peers have to review it and give their reasoned judgment on whether it's good or so-so or great or total rubbish. And they have to do that from zero, based just on the content, not on the reputation of the authors or their institutions, which are kept hidden. And if you want one day to be awarded a PhD and become a peer in this community, you will have to learn to do that, among other things. And your PhD supervisor will hold your hand through this process of critically assessing and reviewing, as well as the processes of running your own experiments, building your own prototypes, writing your own papers, and all the other things a scientist in your field does. This apprenticeship is what the PhD is all about. It is this experience that allows you to become a peer in the community. And you can only learn it by shadowing a good mentor. So choose your PhD supervisor with great care. It must be someone who knows what they're doing, but also someone with whom you personally click and where you both find it exciting to work with each other. It's an enriching relationship that goes both ways. Fourth, the PhD is a process of discovery. The main criterion for awarding your PhD is have you demonstrated you are capable of original research? Have you been able to solve an interesting problem that nobody else in the world could solve before you? Since this is the criterion, then clearly at the core of your PhD, there is this inventive and creative process of discovery, doing something new and original after having carefully surveyed what everybody else already did in that area. And this awareness of prior art is what sets apart the PhD discovery and invention from the everyday discovery and invention that ordinary people tend to do. Hey, I have this great idea. It's an original idea because I came up with it on my own. I didn't copy it from anyone else. Okay, fine. But you didn't read up on everything that everyone else ever did about that. And in fact, someone already did something similar in 1972 before you were born. So it may be new and original to you, but it does not meet the originality criterion for the scientific community. You have to be willing not just to have your own brilliant ideas, which is easy and fun, but to go through everyone else's ideas on that topic, which can sometimes be boring. And you have to know them like the back of your hand. And that's why you have to narrow down your field until it's small enough that it is manageable and realistic for you to know everything that people have done in that particular subfield, and then add something original to it. Fifth, a PhD is an unscripted learning experience. It is a degree conferred by a university, like a bachelor or a master, but Unlike those lower degrees, you don't go to classes and lectures, and you don't get taught stuff from a syllabus. There isn't a textbook that covers the subject, because if there were a textbook, it wouldn't be research anymore. A textbook is written to systematize stuff that has already been researched and figured out, problems that have already been solved. A PhD, instead, is about discovering and creating the stuff that isn't in the textbooks yet, and that people will have to put in future textbooks after you figure it out. So in that sense, the PhD is an unscripted learning experience, I said, because there isn't a plan. There can't be a plan, because by definition, we don't know how to solve the problem. We don't even know for sure whether it can be solved. If we already knew, you wouldn't deserve a PhD for solving it. As Einstein famously said, if we knew what it is that we are doing, it wouldn't be called research. Sixth, a PhD is a trial by fire. Because there isn't a plan, because there is no textbook, because every avenue is open, because we don't even know if it can be made to work, a PhD is an open-ended adventure where many things won't go as planned. A bunch of things you try won't work, and you will have to try something else. If you never fail during your PhD, then you're not being sufficiently adventurous, and what you're doing will probably be too bland and not very interesting. In a PhD, you might want to do things, but find that there are no suitable tools to do them, and you'll have to build and sharpen your own tools. In science and technology subjects, these tools can be software you write, they can be mathematical models you develop, they can be electronic circuits you build, and none of these is actually the product of your research, but just a piece of kit that makes you more efficient at building or producing or discovering the thing that is actually the product of your research. For my former office mate at Trinity, Didier Kelo, the tool that he had to build was a better radio telescope, because he was looking at some faraway star that showed some anomaly. But his PhD was not about the telescope. It was about what he could discover by using the telescope he built. 
And by the way, a few decades later, he got the Nobel Prize in Physics alongside his PhD supervisor for discovering the first exoplanet that was orbiting around that star that he was pointing the telescope at. Think you are a caveman, and your PhD is a dinosaur you need to hunt and kill and cook so your family can eat. You build a spear, you build a flint knife, you build a bow and arrow. These are not your PhD. They are just the tools that you have to build for yourself in order to be able to get your dinosaur your PhD. You can't simply go to the caveman store, which doesn't exist, and buy a ready-made spear or bow. You have to figure them out and build them for yourself. The tools are still just tools. They are not your dinosaur. In that sense, the PhD is a trial by fire because there will be plenty of things you need that aren't there, and you have to procure them nonetheless. If at some point you realize that for your PhD you need to work on system stability and you need Laplace transforms, which you don't know, well then, even if you've already finished your undergraduate, you'll have to go back, pick up a suitable textbook, study it, do the exercises, and understand and learn enough about Laplace transforms so that you can apply them to solve your PhD problem. And if this means you also need to remind yourself about integrals and complex numbers and all the stuff that you did long ago and forgot, well, so be it. A PhD is an adventure where you have to be ready to do whatever it takes to solve your problem, including acquiring new skills, building new tools, becoming knowledgeable in fields you didn't know would be relevant, and so on and so forth. Quite a few people can't handle the hard parts of a PhD. Actually, almost nobody ever fails the PhD examination, but several candidates never submit their dissertation. It's a trial by fire because if you get to the end of the PhD, you prove to yourself and to others that you have been willing and capable of doing whatever it took to solve the problem, even if you were not specifically trained for that when you started. And that, my friend, is the reason why people with a good PhD are considered valuable even for tasks that have absolutely nothing to do with the topic of their PhD. They might get a PhD in physics and then a job in finance, because they have proved they can get themselves out of a tricky situation and solve the problem at hand by doing whatever it takes, even if it involves learning or building totally new stuff that their previous degrees had not prepared them for. Seventh, a PhD is not a goal. It's not a destination. It's exactly the opposite. It's a starting point, the starting point of a research-oriented career. You've proved that you could come up with some novel idea. You've made an original contribution to the field. You've learned the methods. You've learned how to judge the worth of a new publication, whether your own or someone else's. Well, that was just a dry run, and you were still looked after by your helpful supervisor. Now it's time for the training wheels to come off and for you to cycle away into the sunset on your own. From now on, it's your turn to produce plenty more new ideas, plenty more original discoveries, plenty more publications, presentations, articles, one day even books, perhaps. The PhD is a starting point for all that. That's what all these years of training set you up for doing. After you get your PhD, it won't all be smooth sailing. Since research is unscripted, there will still be plenty of cases where you try something and it doesn't work. The more ambitious and creative you are, the more failures you should expect. And yet, at the same time, you will always be under pressure to deliver something, under pressure to publish something, under pressure to find someone to pay your salary while you do all this, without being able to guarantee in any way that you will come up with a usable result. If you stay in academia, expect a much lower pay than you would get if you applied your special talents to industry, let alone if you apply them to run your own business. If you wish to pursue the academic career, expect years of limbo as a postdoc, which is the unglamorous situation of having a PhD qualification but not a permanent job, and having to chase temporary employment, hopping from project to project every couple of years. Is this what you really want? It's not necessarily all black, but it's not all rosy either. Don't embark in a PhD just for the frivolous reasons that you want those extra letters after your name. It's a serious choice with serious consequences. It opens some doors and it closes others. The PhD is a start of a path called research, and you have to be excited at the prospect of continuing to walk down that path for decades to come. If that sounds scary or off-putting, think twice about doing a PhD. Maybe leave it for later, until you've had a few years of experience at a real-world job, like I did, and like my own PhD supervisor also did. I once told that story briefly in another video. As I said at the start, a PhD is an investment in yourself. It has a high cost in many dimensions, money, time, effort, stress, uncertainty, both during and afterwards. Do it if you genuinely love the idea of a lifelong career in research. It will not by itself make you financially rich, but it will change your life. I am certainly very happy of the PhD I chose to do as a mature student after several years as a software developer in industry, after understanding why the PhD would not be, for me, the waste of time I originally thought it was. 
it has indeed changed my life and career quite radically, turning me not only into a professional educator who teaches stuff for future generations, but also into someone who creates bits of the new stuff that future generations will learn. Someone who contributes new nuggets to the world's body of knowledge about my subject. If that's your thing, by all means, go for it. Thumbs up if this video made you think, and please share in the comments what you think are good reasons for wanting to do a PhD. I appreciate you staying till the end, and I commend you on investing these 20 minutes into figuring out whether a PhD is for you. It's a multi-year commitment, even if you get someone else to pay for it, and you need to be really sure of your choice. If you are still here, you probably also want to watch Four Things a PhD is Not, if you haven't already, and you might also like this other longer video. If you like this style of audio-centric video, which focuses more on the actual content and less on the visual frills, and can be listened to while doing other things, then please include the words training wheels in a comment. I'm keen to hear from you. Thank you, and I hope this helped you get a clear idea about a PhD.